was pastoring a church years ago, there was a man that came in that sat, well, from where I was, standing up at the top area over to the right, and he put his hood up like a hoodie, couldn't really see his face, and he began to stretch out his hands and begin to move his hands in all these different directions, and I didn't know what it was. Later, a Satanist and another occultist told me that he was doing chaos magic in which he was uh, conjuring and or releasing the spirits that he had. Into the, I, now, I don't know for sure. I'm just being told what it was. I, don't, I do know that there were prayer intercessors that uh, came and sat behind him and began to pray over him. He got up and he left. Years later, I'm in a church, another church, getting up, uh, ready to speak in the church, and I noticed a man walk in the back. His coven name was Kaino. He is now dead. He had a turban on, a spirit stick, that is a stick that uh, is a serpent, a, a, a snake, but is a spirit stick. In other words, um, summoning demons, uh, the powers, the demons are in and on the serpent, like a cane. Sat the back and he began to rub his hands, he began to mumble and chant and rub his hand around the top of the serpent stick, the head of it, and uh, then as if he was releasing spirits into the sanctuary. Again, prayer intercessors began to see this, and they went behind the man and began to pray it down, and he got up, and he left. The age in which we've been the last number of uh, decades, two or three, I think that it's, um, it's, uh, it's absolutely uh, urgent and vital for the body of Christ to know that uh, it's not warfare as usual in a sense with the biblical prophecies, with the actuality of the demonic and all that's going on around us. It's one thing just to have the oppression, just to have the attack, just to have um, Ephesians chapter 6, the warfare that occurs. But it's another thing to have individuals that spot you, that have demonic presence in them, that don't like you, that are inspired, that hate you, that, that want to do something to um, summon and send a demon against you. How big is that issue? Does it occur in the Old Testament? Does it occur in the New Testament? Is there something about the um, release of demons, sending them to the targets, and then the demons having a action to perform, an activation, something to perform to cause effect? We're going to talk about that on today's Ragged Edge radio broadcast I want to say welcome to all of those around the world that are listening. That's why we ask you to pray for this broadcast. Prior to you listening, thank you for hundreds of you that are doing it. We're going to be looking for thousands of you to do that. Listen, in a short while, we're going to re uh, put up the websites uh, and renew them on uh, prayer intercession, prayer mapping, Project Josiah. And again, the goal is going to be to the millions worldwide. We want to build um, just believers everywhere knowing how to pray with great power and great might. Today, the scripture you can look at, mark down for later, the book of Daniel chapter 1 and 2, this incredible engagement that they go through in Babylon, Daniel is not assimilated. Actually, he comes out better than the sorcerers and the magicians and the astrologers, the Chaldeans. He comes out ten times better than the rest. Let me tell you, that's what I'd love to see believers today, 10 times better. Because the sorcerers and the maguses, the wizards, the practitioners are into the millions worldwide right now. There are powerful ones all over, the shamans, the priests, voodoo, voodan, santeria, palo maombi, abakwa. You can look at uh, santeria, you can look at uh, the entire array of uh, millions of demon gods and goddesses in pantheism, you've got to understand the end of days in, 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 in all of Scripture's revelation. And again, we're pressing the issue because more of the dark side is going to be occurring. Now, what I'm going to do in Dallas coming up, in Dallas on Friday night, I've been told now that I'm going to, I'm going to be the, the speaker on Friday night. And we do have it listed, what's going to be spoken, the title of it. I've never done it before. It's going to be kind of some of what I've done, but it's going to be much deeper and broader. And we're going to go over the actual statistical numbers of practitioners. Those that know how to conjure a demon, that's one thing. 
The numbers are now to the millions worldwide. And it's been growing and growing and growing and growing. There's a reason why Scripture shows such demonic activity. I mean, read Revelation 18 sometime. You know, when this worldwide uh, spiritual system called Babylon is all in place, the culmination of it, demons uh, in everywhere, in the air, on the ground, neighbor, I mean, just everywhere, saturated as was in the days of Daniel. Now, the issue is that um, the influence and in, in the presence of will be so deep, so wide, so broad. But there's going to be a building until that day that's going to develop, as I said the other day, the sequence of satanic evolution. But it's happening. It all begins in the dark of night. In the dead of night. That's part of the title of the thing I'm going to do in Dallas. In the dead of night, in the dark of night, if you remember the story Jesus told, he goes out to put the word of God out and the wheat begin to grow. And then the evil one comes at night and he begins a project. And what Jesus said there has everything to do with the end of days, super soldiers, the troops of Antichrist, and the darkest supernaturalism the world's ever seen. Glad you're here. The Ragged Edge Radio Broadcast going to tell you this. God is in control, and God's got power. He is Yahweh Adonai. He is, he is the Lord Jesus. And there's no question about how the demonic realm trembles at his presence. We pray God's power and God's might and God's kindness and God's grace to you today. We really do. No one loves you more. No one knows you better. Nobody desires you as he does. The Ragged Edge Radio broadcast Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be on a number of uh, radio stations here shortly, a couple of television or audio. Well, there's going to be one that's going to be, when we have the ability here shortly, Skyped uh, visual, and uh, then we're going to be on an actual television. We're going to put all that out. We have the information about Shatter's conferences coming up. The two that I want to really emphasize to you, if you'll take a look at them at some time, go to shadowthedarkness.net. As you do that, you'll see where it says, find us on Facebook. When you hit there, um, to the left-hand side, you'll see where it says conferences. The Watchman's Conference in Dallas, Texas. Now, it's about 40 days or so away, more than that, actually. And, and uh, I want you to, you know... I want you to pray because we're we're being told now that 800, maybe 900, I, I assume because usually many people try to get into the very end, 1,000 are going to be there. There's an expectation. I mean, there's there's battle, there's fighting, there's, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's warfare in the context of it all. But there's also an expectation of the incredible uh, power of God in, a, in, in the hand of God. And, and, and we're going to do a, a very, very updated, specific thing. They've given me a couple hours on Friday night. So I hope you're going to come to the Watchman Conference. And there's an entire website that you can look at. And then one month later, the Supernatural Crossroads Conference. Now that's going to be in Indiana. That's going to be... Uh, that's going to be once again touching on the Nephilim aspect, and uh, we're going to go into even deeper, broader, more evidence of the back breeding, the breeding program, and the goal of the Therion, the, the bestial hybrids. Now, that's going to be April 27th through April 30th, and I'm not sure they know, but on April 30th, Wall Purgis Night, supposedly when Hitler died, though I don't believe he did. I believe he got away that it was plotted and planned. I believe that's um well that's another that's that's another broadcast, right? Glad you're here again today. Take a look, shatterthedarkness.net. Don't forget the hundreds of hours of free uh, and again, absolutely free because we're now well over uh, twenty million downloads of the archives, the training classes. And we will try to make them better for you. And we're making more and more, uh, you know, this whole year we're just plotting so much to put up there for you. So we hope that you will um, you will uh, download and listen and make CDs and so forth and, and keep those. Some people have used those in classes and some have uh, made CDs out of them. And uh, uh, Confronting the Powers course, the Spiritual Warfare courses, Occult Crime courses, Book of Daniel, one on the Holy Spirit. And, and listen, some of them are not even done. We began on a few of those, and we're going to be adding more and more and more and more. That's why some of them are open-ended, and we'll always post a new training. 
Now, this is a radio broadcast, and though we have content, the courses are all about the content. They really are. Looking at breaking news, just real quick, I wanted to give you kind of a heads up. I, I received this morning a Amber Alert on my phone uh, just um, you know, 10, 12 miles away from here to look for a particular car and a, an abduction of a child. Looks like um, a domestic issue, though. We also wanted to tell you about alleged serial killer known as the son of Sal claims on Brooklyn courtroom that he has uh, he was set up by business associate in 2012 the murders of three shopkeepers uh, interesting son of Sal contrasted the son of Sam Department of Children's Services investigates stabbing death of a 15 year old in Frayers Tennessee 12 year old brother arrested. Shepherdsville, Kentucky mayor resigns amid allegations of sexually explicit behavior. Police search for a suspect. 77-year-old man was stabbed in southeast in Indianapolis. Pennsylvania heads up. Health officials confirmed two cases of Zika virus in the state. Both people had traveled abroad, officials say. The Zika virus and all what's behind it, and there is conspiracy concerning it, it's there. Welcome again. This is Russ Dizdar, the website behind all of it, shadowthedarkness.net. You can go to www.theraggededgeradio.com also. Tonight, uh, non-human entities, we've been talking about that. I brought out more of that on the uh, military side of things. I'm looking to my right of her because I'm constantly getting in new books and trying to get to them and just uh, the, 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 just, uh, the research is just maddening sometimes. Back of the book it says, the, um, the psychical research has long been written off as the stuff of cranks and frauds, but there is now one telepathy experiment that leaves even the skeptics scratching their head. That came out of the New Scientist magazine. On the back of the book, it says, the story of the CIA and Soviet sci spies, Cold War psychic battles. The real X-Files of the parapsychological research, telepathy and clairvoyance in espionage and military research, and it goes on more and more. Now, the book's called Psychic Wars, uh, don't know the. I mean, I, the author's name is uh, Elmer Gruber. I don't know this individual, and I'm just now getting the book to research it. But again, it's um, it only scratches the surface of the entirety of it. Will um, will militaries be enticed to weaponize demonic powers? We've talked about it before. I've written about it before, and my answer is, as they've done in the past. So the offer, well, I believe to the. Um, to the Nazis, and I believe the offer to the to the to the to the, to the Russians and to the United States and to others, no question about it. And when the assimilation of a global militaristic system comes, you better believe there will be in place demonstratively the weaponization of demonic powers. More and more, the non-human entities will be seen for what they are, not just giving non-human enhancements, not just um, a realization, as in the Stargate program, as in the remote viewer program, it was just a passivity, then it was the feeling of energy, then it was the connection, then it was the entities. If you feel the energy, it emanates from the entity. And yes, it's a non-human entity. Could be a cosmocrat. It could be Archon. It could be Exusia. It could be Poneus Numenicae or Planos. Those are five of the descriptions the Spirit of God gives concerning the demonic realm and the uh, species of the fallen. They are mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6. They are mentioned in 1 Timothy 4, 1 on down. And uh, there's, um, they're all the same in their origin, all the same in their nature, all the same in their agenda, all the same in their methods. But they are different in function. They are, they are different um, in their type, in the way they work. Out of the skies above us, from the ground below. And it is without question the Old Testament, the summoning of demons, and the release of demons and the human sacrifice in many different ways. 
It is also true today that I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell Dallas, and I'll probably bring this out in Indiana also. It'll be in the book Transmuted, uh, the kind of uh, update of the Black Awakening, an entire chapter on the statistical issue. If there are now, as I say, in my estimation, 100 million SRA, MPD, DID, chosen ones, those spiritually selected and uh, bred to become the, uh, whether they, um, the breeding project of Levensborn continued and continues to this day, and I believe it's deeper and darker than ever before. That's how the initiation of the left-hand path is, all, is anyway, and that's how the, any, then that's just simply a method of Satan, In, you know, increment by increment, inch by inch until he's got you down to the deep basement. Sometimes it seems like there's no way out. The non-human entities, well, again, the nature, demonic, satanic, uh, the agenda is 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 uh, unveiled only in the scripture, nowhere else. Now, others have written books about it. I'm listening to a Kindle book this morning uh, called New World Order, and, and, and I'm really liking it. And I might bring some quotes of it tomorrow night, tell you about it. I don't know the author, but um, there are books that I think that are really, really uh, key right now for everyone. Shine our directive and others, but I want you to um, I want you to begin to think about it. And we talk about uh, the the way the spirits, the demons, the the dark ones, are going to be engaging the political, the military, the scientific tech world, and uh, and and the the wealthy elite. It's all it's all going to be gathered together, and it's all going to be done in a sequential, in an evolutionary, satanically evolutionary way until the big day of the revolt and the new age, you know, until until Revelation 13. And, and, and we're going to see the Anabano. Uh, that is um, a very descriptive word by the Spirit of God in the unleashing of a new world order after the massive chaos and the collapse. Now, in doing all of this, I mentioned the military because I wanted to bring warning, and no doubt there may be some more listening tonight. This is part five of the entire series that we've been doing, and the series simply now, I'm calling it this week, we added a little bit to it, we called it The X-Files, and again, I'm watching some of the new stuff, it's just, there's the, you know, there's speculation, there's junk, there's rabbit trails, there's, there's all kinds of weird things, and everybody's interested in the weird things, but there's also glimmers of reality, like in the film Manchurian Kennedy, like in the film Conspiracy Theory. Now, on the website, shadowthedarkness.net, here's what it says. The extra, T-R-A, files, revisited or revised. And when I say revisited and revised and new information and new things to focus on and some of the old stuff to be thrown away. Now, there's also, in the context of all this, the other side dumbing down the conspirators. I mean, no matter who it is, it's bringing out anything that touches their realm. Of course, they want to make... Um, those who are exposing, um, you know, they want to go after them. They want to give disinformation. I mean, they, they really want to do it that way. They want to get everybody pointing their heads into one direction. This is where the power of that deception is, because when they say peace, peace, but there is no peace, sudden, this is the word of God now, sudden destruction will strike. So once again, the broadest supernatural global deception moving the world in one direction. But the truth is, underneath that blanket, underneath that smokescreen, well, the, the reality of a new order, the reality of what they're going to do, and the destruction to follow. Now, we talk about it a lot because um, we are in the... the, 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 the well, the, the days just before all of this comes out, maybe, you know, years, people ask me all the time, how many years? I don't know. I cannot see, in my personal opinion only, that we can be here more for more than 10 years. Good news is, we're talking about the return, the visible return of Christ, indestructible immortality, the new immortal race to come, and the ending of radical evil in all that it is. So I'm up this morning, out and about, doing the stuff that I need to get done. Stop at the YMCA, go to the hot room, four or five people in there. Here comes my little friend, 
little um, just a little 20 year old girl that comes in we've talked a lot witnessed to her told her that we're praying for her. got to and the question comes up by just her in her search why is there all the radical evil why do people do what they do why do people do this and so we um, got into the discussion, and others listened. And when she left, then a 65, 67-year-old woman began to talk to me about it. And, and they're hearing uh, maybe something they never heard. Where, you know, in a world in which, you know, people get mad at God, they get mad at the world, they get mad at everybody else, and they have no idea of the dark side and what it causes. That's the picture of Job. That's the revelation from the book of Job. Job is hit. His family is hit. His properties are hit. His wealth is hit. His health is hit. Everything is hit. There's an assignment behind it. There's a, there's a reason for it. There's a dark side reason for it. Now, he doesn't know until the end, and the three friends that came by could not tap into the causes. Part of the book's going to tell us that bad things that happen to you are not just cause and effect in a fallen world. Dark entities with an agenda to bring harm, to bring destruction. Job finds out about this in the end. If you don't understand the spiritual warfare aspect, and if someone says they don't even believe in any of it, then you will be, you, listen, you're already, you, you, the blanket is over your perception your and, 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 and discernment and abilities perceived. You cannot have um, clear thinking, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Have I not mentioned that? The God of this age has blinded the minds. The word blind, look it up. The idea of throwing smoke, uh, that is uh, a, a supernatural operation. I mean, there is a real real working there from the dark side, the mysterium, the, the collective work of the demonic and Satan together. Uh, blinding the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see. It, 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 listen. Let me make it very clear. Maybe you're maybe you're not a believer in Christ and you're not even sure about all of that. Let me make it very clear. If you get a Bible, go, on, go online. If you're listening online, BibleGateway.com, Biblos.com, and look up, just simply look up 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Look what God says is true about Satan, the dark side, and them blinding minds with one goal, so that you cannot see. Look in that little, one singular verse, massive revelation that involves your perception. It involves your discernment. It involves your thinking process. When I watched a number of individuals today in the hot room there in the YMCA uh, thinking about radical evil, human trafficking, satanic rituals, all the rest of what we were talking about, some of the ugly blood and gut stuff. I even apologized to the to the elderly woman that was there, and she said, no problem. That's, that's how the world really is. But they could not define why. Is it in the genes? Well, the fallen nature, sure, Romans 8. The sin code, it's in the DNA. It's in, the, it's in us as a foreign um, presence, operative, until, of course, Christ comes in and breaks that. And a new power is given. Take a read Romans 8, big study. It involves uh, the, the very substance of uh, what happened to us in the fall of the human race. What happens to us in the redemption. Yes, we are forgiven by Christ in totality. But we're also, by his presence and power and what I call the physics of God, the work of God in Christ, we are set free from the law, the operating, the law of sin and death, the sin code. Romans 8, if you want to study that, tonight, non-human entities as they are engaging the rest of the world. And um, on a global scale, yes, there's a blinding that goes on. Again, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, they, they don't want you to see uh, the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ. They don't want you to hear that. The most brilliant, the most incredible. You know what the message is all about? God is real. God loves you. God wants you. God can um, literally change you from the inside out and give you immortality and the ability to see him face to face. Because what Jesus did on that cross. Uh, there's no one like Christ, that's for sure. 
Now, there's an alternative in the context of all of this because that's part of the end of days. And I'm going to tell you a moment here about the spirit of Antichrist. I've been watching videos and documentaries today, reading materials and other stuff in the context of prep for this. And uh, just in what we do, the spirit of Antichrist. I saw a part of a uh, video clip today on um, some of the chateaus in France. And I was at the Rennes Chateau. Rennes Chateau. Remember in Da Vinci Code, the very end of the show when they were at Rennes Chateau, where the Knights Templar and the Holy Grail and the you know the the bloodline, of, you know the the whole message that the Gnostics tried to bring about that Christ didn't die, the goddess worship, all the rest. If you remember that in the in the movie uh, the Da Vinci Code, I was there. Let me tell you about Rennes Chateau. Rennes Chateau is um, very beautiful in all of France. All around there is astoundingly beautiful. I could live there easily. But as we got up to the um, kind of castle, it's kind of a community. It's kind of a lot of things. There's bookstores. There's a, we ate there, had steak actually in one of the little, little tiny restaurant up there. And uh, the, just, but as I got there, the spirit of Antichrist was massive. And as I read some of my friends' military background, as I looked into the last number of years, and I'm telling you again, the concept, the spirit of Antichrist, spoken about in the book of First John, great book to empower you in discernment so you can know the difference between the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. There is a doctrinal revelation, there is a presence, there is a confession of Christ, all that deals with knowing the difference. The Spirit of God will always bring about that Christ is God in human flesh. He's the Savior of the world, and the Spirit of God is to make it very clear how to be saved, how to come to God and know Him directly. The Spirit of Antichrist just the opposite. The Spirit of Antichrist is to um, obscure all of that, keep you from seeing the real Christ, Present a dumbed-down version. You know what the evidence of the spirit of Antichrist is? There at the Rin Chateau, there in the Gnostics, and among the Gnostics, among the New Age movement, among the Mormons, among the Jehovah's Witnesses, among many others. The spirit of Antichrist is evident when the denial of the deity of Christ is, 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 is um, predominant. And wherever there is a denial of the deity of Christ, there is also then a denial of direct salvation through, through Jesus, where God comes into you and the Spirit of God comes into you. The Spirit of Antichrist will bring a replacement, always a de-deified, non-saving, fake Christ that you cannot know, that cannot help you. While the spiritual presence and deception around that wants to give you enhancements and drive you towards a never-ending search of an evolution to Godhood. That's the spirit of Antichrist. Wherever you see the spirit of Antichrist operative in a system, the New Age as a whole worldwide, the old Gnostics. But let me tell you about the spirit of Antichrist that the book of 1 John speaks about. That every believer should know the difference between the spirit of Antichrist, and the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. While we are there at Rennes Chateau, looking at all, looking at the lands, looking where the battles occurred, looking across to the upside down, where, you know, locating the upside down or what they call the magic mountain. I went into the chapel like a Catholic church, an old, 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 You've got to understand how old this is. If you watch the movie at all, remember the uh, the statue of Satan in the corner, and it's actually there when you walk in. All the um, all of the uh, the the ambiance of the place, and and it's really quite unbelievable. But listen, as someone who has the spirit of God in them, I walked into the Ren Chateau, into that so-called church building, chapel, whatever they want to call that. And I think the presence in there knew who I was, and there's Claire, a clear, it was clear to me, I knew what was there. Besides, besides the Himmler Castle, Rin Chateau was one of the darkest places I've ever been. The spirit of Antichrist was so strong and so thick, the dark side's presence 
Anytime I've felt that in ritual places deep in the woods and places that we've been, it reminded me, and it always reminds me, where human sacrifice, blood sacrifice has been done. And the portholes have been open. And gateways have been open for bringing deep influence. I went into the chapel and left the chapel. I went into the chapel and I left the chapel. Let me tell the true story um, that occurred while I was there, Rin Chateau. I went up to the one bookstore looking around at all the books. I went to the other bookstore looking at all the books. There's an old, old woman selling the books. She had a bandana thing over her head. Just an old, old woman. Dark would never look at me face to face. And as I looked at all of the occult books and all of the things that they had there that was occult, new age, Gnostic, dark, I finally said, hey, do you have any Bibles here among this? She wouldn't respond. I got closer to the old woman and I said, are there any Bibles here in uh, this bookshop? She didn't look at me, but turned her face towards me looking down. She hissed put her hand like like she was disgusted that I even asked the question and quickly walked away behind a curtain into the back. Walking around there, I was so bugged about the spirit of Antichrist and the entities that I felt that were there and had been there and the things that had been done there for years and years that it had to be an occult center, a ritual center, things done underground, such the spirit of Antichrist promoted around the world. I stood on the outside of the castle thinking about the Da Vinci Code and how much influence it brought to millions upon millions and that it focused back to this place. A beautiful place, but such manifest darkness. I kept saying in my heart, the spirit of Antichrist is here. The spirit of Antichrist is here. I went over to my friend and I said, watch the door. Nobody was in the chapel. So I went inside the chapel, past all of the pews, and I went up to the front where they would consider an altar area. And I began to pray out loud and I began to pray louder and louder and louder. I quoted a little bit of Hebrew. I only know a little. I quoted some Greek in the context of that. And I'm praying against the spirit of Antichrist. I'm praying against the lies that have been embedded there for years. I'm praying against rituals that have been done there. I'm praying that God would do something so powerful and so, you know, break through in such a way that anybody that comes there, because many, many tourists come there, that God would uh, bring a witness there. And I'm, I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying. In the Spirit of God, I feel Him, His power all over the prayers. And I'm praying and I have my arms lifted up and I'm literally, I'm just loud and it's echoing in that Catholic chapel, whatever it is, loudly. I didn't even think about it. I was kind of lost in the prayers. When I was done, I turned around and there were 30 to 40 people standing in the pews looking at me as if they were afraid of me. I don't know if they heard me and they just began to come to see what all the yelling was. I don't know if they spoke English. But I um, kind of looked at them and they looked like if I move towards them, they work, walk. They would move away. So I politely just walked down the middle aisle, nodded to my friend, and we walked out that door. I sat back a number of times, kicking myself. I should have stood there where I was sitting. I should have preached the gospel and shared Christ, regardless of, of what would have occurred. I don't know if I was led or not led. I don't know if we were supposed to get out of there right away or if we were going to get in trouble. I don't I don't know all of that. But I do know clearly the Spirit of God, the prayer and supplication guided me to pray in such a way. I'm going to tell you that there's going to be a lot of those kind of old places opened up all over the world. Nephilim architecture, demonic temples, ancient artifacts demonized, the old portholes being opened everywhere, books upon books upon books upon books, how to summon demons. You know, you can go onto YouTube. I'm not going to give you the names, but I can tell you by names the, the numbers and numbers and numbers of YouTube videos that have black magicians and real uh, Luciferians teaching how to summon demons and how to interact with them and how to let them come into your body and, and 
some of them teach about how to summon them and send them. Much of them, many of them did not teach what the undergrounders really do teach. Listen, if you know anything about Voodoo, Voodoo, uh, Kentabali, if you know anything about uh, Santeria and Palo, if you know anything about the Abakwa, Bruharia, many others, if you know anything about these, you know that all of them have the abilities where the Paleo, the Babalao, the, the Santero, the priest and priestesses, they know how to um, do the rituals that summon demons. They know how to put hexes on people. They know how to send demons. They know how to send curses. Even in witchcraft, whether modern-day witchcraft wants to admit it or not, the witchcraft books are very, very clear. Um, hexes and spells and curses. And then there's the Satanist, and I go to some of those sites today and looked at some of those again and saw where they're teaching how to summon demons and what to do with them. And I think that a lot of the materials and what I've seen over, over some time don't go as far as the Bible reveals what the dark side does nor the underground that God led us to see, like in Ezekiel chapter 8, the, the summoning of demons and the sending of demons with assignment is a global phenomenon I believe has been going on for six to seven decades with increasing numbers, increasing powers, increasing effects, and I believe that has everything to do with the development of the dark side's agenda in the world to accomplish in the world. It's not going to do it without that power. God said that 2,600 years ago in Daniel, that the entire rise of that new order, the rise of the Antichrist, not by human hands, the powers. Now, now that I've said all of that, let me say something else to you. The other side knows the powers of God. The other side knows the, the name of Jesus. We read about it in the book of James. They're, they tremble, they shudder, they, they, they literally do at the, even the name of Christ. When I was in Roswell and one of the guys, one of the guys that claimed to be an ambassador sent by the aliens to tell the rest of humanity. When I said to him, why do they fear Jesus? Oh, he said, they don't really fear. Uh, they just respect him. They just, uh, they just respect him and they don't mess with him. I said, no, these entities fear the living Christ because of who he is. The real Christ, God in human flesh, the Logos become flesh. This is vital in this day and hour because the word of God and the works of God are powerful, powerful demonstrations of God in the saving, healing, delivering of human beings and of the exposing and the bringing down and uh, the destruction at times of the demonic work, the satanic work. Never forget First John 3, 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Some people think the world's just bad. Some people think just people are bad. Governments are bad. And all of this is bad. You have no idea of the dark side's influence, the dark side's work, and what they're doing in the world to bring more violence, more destruction. It's an outrage what's going to happen, but it corresponds with the manifesting demonic presence that has been, is, and will continue to be more than ever unprecedented. As I say all of that, let me um, mention Revelation 16, 14. Never heard a sermon on it. Never heard anybody talk about this. I'm reading here from a, um, uh, it's from a, a, a Greek in a linear year, kind of, um, it, the English King James is right next to it, but here's what it says. They are indeed spirits of demons. It's the Greek word daemonoia. Performing... Now, if you read this out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the Antichrist, out of the mouth of the false prophet, poieo is the word. Poieo. They release demonic spirits, almost like in a triangulation. They release 
not just into the air, not just random. This is not just random stuff. And this is what the body of Christ needs to understand about the Old Testament, King, uh, the Moabite king, many others in the Old Testament, when it was, whether it was around uh, Moloch or Baal or the rest. You've got to understand the, um, the design of summoning and uh, the, um, the seeking of the demon to do what the practitioner wants which can include sending, sending sickness, sending curses, sending harm, sending, you know, so many different things. This, uh, what I'm reading right now, the book of Revelation 16, this may occur, this may actually occur in, it could actually occur in the next five to ten years. I, I, I want, I don't know if you've studied this at all. Verse 13, Revelation 16, John says, And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs. Again, a demonst- uh, that's a, again a picture of an ancient deity. Uh, the gnarly looking, they look like, they, they were not frogs, but they were like. They, there was a likeness. There was a, a sense of what they looked like. He saw them. Remember what he said? He saw them. They come out of the mouth flowing out of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, the Greek word daemon on, demon. Now, poieo is working, meaning really operative. It's really real. They're going to work miracles. They're going to work in astounding wonders. Now, here's what it says. They, these demons, which are s- s- literally summoned up and sent out, which g- they go forth to the kings of the earth, kings of the earth are targeted. Now these kings are already prepped. They're already prepped, but they're still going to be needed. Listen, what activates Armageddon? If you think in terms of Armageddon, the culmination of um, the entire the entire working uh, of the of Satan in the, in the demonic realm is to get to Armageddon. It's where they're going to raise their weapons into the, you know, towards the sky because they need to stop the descent of Christ. Revelation 19.19. 19. Reread that. Understand. They've got to get there. Biblical revelation shows us that the Antichrist, his armies, they make it there. But they don't get there without this. A planetary. Summoning, release, and sending, targeting a global planetary wave. Now, I've listened in the past to New Age. Um, there's there's an expectation among New Agers worldwide of a spiritual wave to come. Revelation 16 speaks of a global spiritual wave that goes directly to the political military kings of the earth, those in control. It says, of the whole world. Here's the intent. And this is why I'm going to tell you when it comes to priests and priestesses, maguses and wizards and sorcerers, all of those that know how to summon, if they know how to summon, they know how to send against their enemies. They know how to send upon their own people to empower their own people. And here's what is not known by the body of Christ worldwide. There may be up to a hundred million that know how to summon and send demons. I'll get to that in a moment. And that it may be occurring two, three, four, five times per month and hugely at the big rituals and primarily at blood rituals. This was a release of the demons and the powers that would do a Poyeo, a working, a a real, um, I mean, effect, a, a miraculous effect on these kings. And here's what it's going to do. To gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. People have asked me in the past, Russ, will there be an activation of the super soldiers on a global scale? Could be sounds, it could be a lot of other things, but I would say that it's going to be similar to this. And the undergrounders who are still there, they know this. They don't want this secret out. They do not want this to be told. 
that prior to the great chaos, the great revolt, the, the Red Horse event, um, in, their, in their confessions, uh, there's going to be a simultaneous working of rituals, summoning and release of demonic presence that will activate all of this, that will bring a bloodshed and a killing and a calling of humankind never seen in history. Revelation 6, Restudy, Red Horse. I believe it's by design. By design in the, um, the, um, the ridding the world of uh, the, the vast numbers of people. To have a more manageable, more manageable population by the elitists. You understand all of what's going to be occurring has uh, real boots on the ground. The Luciferians are real. The elitists are real. They're operative, and the major rituals, like at Bohemian Grove, other places in the world, probably no question about it, Himmler's Castle, the high places all over. But let me tell you something. It doesn't have to be the high places alone. Let me give you some insight to the underground. This is um, very similar to Ezekiel chapter 8. 33 years of working with this. What I've seen, what we're going to put out here in, a, uh, in an updated uh, extra chapters of the book, The Black Awakening, is a section on the rituals done and the, and the reasons why and the sheer numbers. In a nutshell, here's what I believe. Any ritual date you read on the satanic ritual calendar, there may be 50 to 100 million individuals. doing the same type of ritual in which there is a summoning of the demonic, a manifestation of the demons. Number one way they do this is by blood sacrifice, by the way. The real society, the real, the dark left-hand Luciferian among the Nazis that may have been the power behind the rise of Nazi ideology, they knew this, especially babies. Children's child sacrifice, like with Moloch and the rest, right? This is nothing new if you've read the scripture in the Old Testament. It's part of what they're all about. It's how they manifest to this side. And one thing I'll say in all of your studies, if you're looking at the Nephilim, Nephilim architecture and you're digging and digging and digging, Wherever you find their development, you're going to find massive human sacrifice to create massive portal, massive, massive opening, uh, massive empowerment. And uh, the goal in those days prior to the flood, possibly, even to form a global spiritual grid. Every single satanic, ritually abused individual, because we look at those phrases and say they are victims, and they are. There's no question about the intent that we have to see them saved, healed, delivered. And if you're listening, that's all that we have. Guess what God has come to do? Jesus has come to unravel, to heal, to restore, to save you. And he is your ultimate hope, the real Jesus, who is God, who hung on the cross for you, died and rose from the dead. He's coming again. That's the Savior present right now. Now... Again, I'm going to tell you on a global scale, statistically, we now are through four generations. The 88-year-old, 95-year-old, old Nazis, all of those that went around all, around all around the world, where they ended up, the birthing projects continued. The goal for the master race continued. Modern-day satanic ritual abuse, DID, MPD, is nothing less than than the extension of the creation of a master race of super soldiers intent on serving a new order and a new world super leader. Anybody working with SRA, they're going to find that out when you deal with cult parts. Priestesses with twilight, all of them have twilight. They all know the languages to summon demons. They all know how to draw on the ground, the circles, the symbols, the writings. They know how to summon. They know how to acquire. They know how to bring manifestation. They know how to, in the context of that, send. Not only receive demons and give demons for their 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 covens and uh, to release them in the air. They know how to target 
people, Christians. They know how to target the military. They know how to target the political. They know how to target to strike with influence, to strike with intent, to strike. Just as these demons had been sent, it's coming, Revelation 16, this global planetary release uh, has one target, the political military leaders of the world. It has one intent with this, with the, with the poyao, the, uh, the, the, the actual, the effect of the supernatural wonder will cause them to come to the fields of Armageddon. The last day of fallen human history. The last day of the new order is Revelation 19, 20 and 21. That's infallible, irrevocable, and that is a solid stand that every believer dealing with the underground will be able to stand on. What God says he's going to do has never been outdone. Satan has never been able to break the prophecies or destroy the recipients or alter. He doesn't have the ability nor his collective, nor his combination of man, demon, the whole new order. The demons come, as we read in uh, 1 Timothy 4, 1, or 2 Thessalonians 2, or 1 John 2. Um, they're the spirits of Antichrist, and then the, the Antichrist to come, I mean, and the, and, and the, or the little Antichrists, and, and they're coming to engage humanity. Now, this has been going on. And if you really do the studies, you'll go all the way back to the 1800s. But, but, but from the 30s on, the 40s on, major, major developments on a global scale of the new age. But it's a scratch of what is to come here shortly. No matter what you believe, no matter what you have to say, whether you say, well, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in anything. That doesn't change anything. That doesn't change the facts. They're coming with massive deception, massive seduction, and the goal of total assimilation. Revelation 12, you'll read it there. The dragon and his, Satan and his, the collective worldwide, the coming, not only for the deception, not only for the seduction, but the ultimate goal of assimilation. Now there's going to be a lot, they're going to die in the middle of all of that. Every single satanic, ritually abused person has within them, whether they are first generation, basically the age is 55 to 68, 69, maybe even 70. The second generation, which can be anywhere from the, you know, 35 to 48, you know, the, the third generation, anywhere from, you know, 19 through 27. The fourth generation, there are 12 year olds that have subparts created inside that are completely able to cry out in demonic languages, twilight languages, what they've learned. Summon demons. If you understand the scale of this, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, England, Scotland, Germany, Italy, France, Scandinavian countries, all among the Norths, and the Russians, the Czechs, and on and on, and on South Africa, South, where you, you got to understand it is multi-continental, multinational. On the upcoming ritual nights, that's why we're trying to get believers to in their own areas because when I say SRA, MPD, many, many are getting out. Many, many are breaking free by the authority and power and grace and might of Jesus. But the other half of them are still intact. Which means that on World, World Purchase Night, for example, in the United States, every city, every location, every township, there will be rituals. Every SRA that is intact, that is still controlled, will perform satanic rituals. They will summon. They may receive demons, transfer demons, interact with demons, but you can be sure they are going to send demons. Satanic ritually abused have inside of them personalities highly trained in warfare, Demonically empowered astral warfare, demonically enabled summoning of demons, targeting churches, targeting pastors, and sending. 
You ever feel something come to your house in the middle of the night? Three o'clock. You ever all of a sudden just get seized with something? A wave? Have you ever discerned yet when a demon comes moving into a room? Do you know the authority of Christ? Are you aware? Are you alert spiritually? The Spirit of God inside of you, greater is He than that which is in the world. See, if you're a real believer lit up by the Spirit of God, the authority of the Lord, and you have the armor of God on, you're going to be able to respond in a massive, massive way. Could you imagine 10 million believers understanding this in the context of evangelism? And you're going forth to win nations and win cities and win villages and win people groups? Massive prayer, authority used, the rebuking of the demonic, and the praying of the power of God to come. All around us, and even this weekend, and when they know you and when they get mad at you and you, when you begin to do the works, I mean, you're going to have warfare. Believers who do not know the grace, might, power, armor, authority, that we should know, they're the believers that are afraid. They're the believers that, um, strange, I'm looking to my left, I have a TV that has um, live feed media on showing Mardi Gras, people dressed as skeletons and demons. Any real voodoo down there? You better believe it. Any summoning and sending? You better believe it. In a day in which we live, there's people that you work with that know how to summon and send demons. There's people in your business places, people in your neighborhoods, people in your family lines, and they all know how to now summon and send, do hex, do a spell, do a curse, do a ritual. And there may be 50 million or more that have been trained to be the conduits in the summoning and sending of demons to advance the cause of the great chaos in the new order. Believers in Christ, empowered with the Spirit of God, listen, let me tell you again, take a look at the book of Acts and you're going to see renouncing all fear, yielded to the Savior. This is, a, this is the God of heaven that wills the salvation of men and women and you as you're listening. Come out of the darkness, come to the living Christ. you got to know Him as Savior and Lord. Be filled with the Spirit of God. The Word of God commands us, and we're called to be alert, spiritually lit up, Gregorio, lit up to discern, but use your authority to tread the demonic. Have the armor of God on which you stand shielded. Know Psalm 91 well in all that God does in your protection. You and I are to live in this dark world as great, great, demonstration of the light of Christ, the truth of Christ, the brilliance of Christ, the person of Christ, the gospel of Christ. We are at the end of the hour. This is Russ Dizdar. Shatterthedarkness.net on the web. Remember us in your prayers. Hey, remember us with support and investment this year. God bless. 